Next bit of complacency, earnings, specifically earnings in retail and tech. This morning, Ralph Ford reported a fantastic number with excellent growth, sharply better than expected. It's been ages since we've heard that, that a supplier to retail, especially a mall retailer, is doing well. And, of course, they also own freestanding stores. Now, forget that much of the strength here came from pulling merchandise from poorly performing malls. When you see the end of the inverted yield curve, you want to buy stocks that do well in a healthy economy. And, and apparel fits the bill. Our RL even here does. You know what, though? You know what I really like? Columbia Sportswear, COLM. It had the misfortune of reporting back when everyone was still worried about a recession. Uh, if it had reported today, the stock would have been flying, too, and Mr. Boyle was on. You know he told a great story. But let's be careful here. See, because the pin action from Ralph Lauren... Spurred a major rally in retail. It was also helped last night by Costco doing a little bit better than expected. Number. And the problem is it's very unlikely that all these retailers are doing well. Time to trim as anyone who owns the faltering Gap, which just reported a not-so-hot number and saw its CEO dispatched with, knows I'm trying to keep you out of more Gaps, not just the store. The fourth source of complacency the endless run in the stocks of the banks. Uh, you know I've been a huge champion of the group. I think the financials represent incredible value. And the rebound in long-term interest rates will let them make more money. But can we just admit that the people buying these banks, let's just say they aren't exactly early? Sure, some of the larger banks could get business from a move into China if that Chinese, uh, Chinese let it happen. However, I doubt business has gotten that much better that fast. I think it's too tenuous given that we're still in the midst of a slowing economy. Final piece of the paying loss puzzle, the possibility that the rollout of 5G wireless networks will drive all semiconductor cohort higher, not just the companies that benefit from 5G, which I will outline later in the show. No, all of them are going higher. And that's how we got Wall Street's reaction to the huge number Qualcomm reported, moving everything up that has anything to do with anything inside a cell phone, but also, most importantly, inside cars, inside buildings, inside data centers. Hey, come on. Not all that's working. I mean, Corvo was great, but people have extrapolated that to pretty much everything. They did it again with Qualcomm. I say dream on. There are plenty of great 5G plays. I have them, but don't go beyond them. Look, I'm not saying you should expect a big sell-off. I don't. In fact, many stocks like that of Disney act just like champs. But the bottom line is that when you have a jailbreak of immense stock proportions like we're having right now, you need to remember that not everything will work out perfectly. So when the market starts behaving like we're in the best of all possible Panglossian worlds, it is time to to ring the register, go out, maybe go buy a cashmere sweater. And that way you'll have more cash to work with the next time things go south. Because we know, sadly, they always do. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.